Welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. I wanted to do a video today on some medicinal plants. Uh, and it's been raining, so I'm kind of having to do this sort of rushed. Uh, but this is plantain. And it's, this is growing right outside the front door of my shed where I make my pottery and stuff. And I've, I've cut around this. And, of course, I've got a pumpkin that came up what we call volunteer and it's where I had just set some pumpkins to save them to get the seed out of and it came up and I let it go and you see there's a pumpkin growing right here so I'm gonna turn it where it sets up right and it'll grow a little more uniform but you see there's a large patch of this so this is Plantago Major it's the broad leaf uh, and I'll get you a close-up but this turns purple down here toward the stem. A lot of it, when you pick it, you look at some of them are a little more purple than others. This one's not real purple. However, this one here, it has a real purple shoot down toward the bottom, and I'll get you a close-up. Very broad leaf, you see, compared to my hand. Uh, a lot of medicinal purposes. In fact, I've heard some people say that this plant, if you've got it, you don't really need nothing else. Uh, but I'm not going to do a lot of medicinal plants. There's piles of other videos on YouTube on medicinal plants. However, I did want my channel to contain a few of the common ones that I use. Now, one of the ones that will not be in this video is uh, goldenrod. I really like goldenrod. I like it for a tea. Um, but it's not blooming this time of year and it's it's gonna be a while before it does but i'm gonna do another whole video on goldenrod and uh I, because i really like it for a tea and it has a lot of its own medicinal properties it's probably close to what this is but this has a lot of medicinal properties to it uh, and i'm and these seeds these seeds have medicinal purposes in their own selves depending on what books you look in and where you read there's a lot of information, but there's a lot of information out there that's missing stuff. So uh, we're going to gather some of this, and I'm, I'm going to put some of this to dry, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to harvest. Part of this right here, because I need to clean some of this up, and uh, obviously I'm going to leave it. What I did is let it go to seed. I'm going to let some more of it seed out where it'll spread. I use it for topical, like I got into poison ivy, and, and we rubbed it on that. Uh, and I don't normally break out from poison ivy. My wife had a big spot of it. We put it on there, and it seems to be helping, relieving some of the itching, that sort of thing. So, uh, but I've got a couple of books here that I've used. Now, these are some books that I touched on in another video. This one I didn't. This is the Peterson's Guide to Medicinal Plants and Herbs. You can find that on Amazon. I'll put a description in my box to it. This plant here is an old book, uh, back in the 60s, Using Plants for Healing by Nelson Kuhn. I did find that this book is on Amazon for about $18, $19. I'll put a link to it. You look in the description, you find it. It's a good book. However, this book does not have anything about wild lettuce in it. I really looked and looked and looked because I have a video on wild lettuce that's... Uh, I didn't know as much about it when I filmed the video, however I had used it, I knew enough about it. It's still a good video, but I'm just saying I have learned more, I know a little more about it than I did then. Uh, some of it due to some of you guys' comments, uh, you know, uh, you people comment, they know, I know there's some of you that are going to watch this that know more about this plantain than I do. Uh, however, I know enough about it that I use it, and that's why we're going to touch on the ones that I use. But, uh, they, uh, Cowberry's got some good videos on it. Mike Reed Outdoors has some good videos. And I refer back to guys that I know that use these plants to do it. Not just somebody that comes out and does a video on, hey, this is a scientific plant, and I read about this plant, and here it is. Uh, the Herbal Jedi, he's he got some great videos. Uh, but I like to refer back to the guys that I know that use the plants that are, you know... I, you know that they're still alive and they've used it, so it, it works. And that's the way some of this is. Uh, but we're going to cut some of this, and uh, I'll show you, and I'm going to get you a close-up on what this looks like. See, I've got me a little basket here. I'm just going to harvest 
enough of it that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt to make some uh, medicine. And uh, like that leaf there has got some damage to it. I, I think it's all right though. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pick and clean up one of these edges. And I like to pick stuff in one of these little old baskets that I picked up at a yard sale. But I've got my pack that when I go down, we're going to go pick some other plants. And uh, it's raining. And I want to be able to put my camera gear in my bag. And I was going to just look for a couple other things. Some of these are very large. Now I'm not gonna pick, oh, I'm gonna pick that much right there and that's it. I'm gonna rinse some of this off. So we've got a little bit in our basket. I wanted you to get a good close up of these seed pods. You see how long some of them are? And this plant has been let go for quite a while to mature. You can see those leaves, about how big some of them are. And this is a pretty good little patch right here. And like I said, okay, I brought my plants right on in here. I wanted to start to sprinkle rain and it's just kind of misting on and off. Uh, these books, I wanted to talk about this plantain here for just a second. Uh, this is broadleaf, I think it's, uh, and I've marked in here some of it. Uh, let me find it in this book. I marked the uh, wild lettuce that I'm going to pick some of. But in the index, this is the Peterson's Guide. And that camera will have to autofocus. I don't know how well you've seen that, but I double check you in a little while on it okay that's narrow leafed plantain oh which is plantago lanceolata <laughs> oh. and the uses and all the stuff on it is the same thing as plantago major oh. and it has pictures in here of both in this uh, Peterson's Field Guide. I like this book and I use I usually keep a couple of different guides with me when I'm looking for stuff and learning stuff or explaining stuff. These common plants I know a pretty good bit about because I use them pretty regular. Um, but I'm going to read in here so that you know that I'm not just making stuff up or telling you what I think it says. And I'm going to read what it says on just the, uh, the uses. Uses traditionally leaf tea called, used for coughs, diarrhea, dysentery, bloody urine. Science confirms broncholi, and I'm not a good reader, okay? Not on these scientific terms. Bronchodilation, action used in Europe for bronchitis, the bronchial spasms due to colds, approved in Germany for treatment of catarrh of the upper respiratory tract, and inflamed mucous membranes of the mouth and throat, leaves applied to blisters, sores, ulcers, swelling, insect stain, insect stings, also used for earaches, eye ailments, thought to reduce heat and pain of inflammation. Science has vindicated utility in healing sores with mild antibiotic and anti-inflammatory the mucilage from the plantain seed may lower cholesterol levels. So the seed itself, they say, it may lower your cholesterol levels. A warning, some plantains may cause rare in instances of contact dermatitis. And one more thing before we get into any of these plants. I know we've on into the video now, but anytime you're using a plant, that is new to you that you've never used, there's always a chance that you are allergic to this plant. So take things with a little bit of caution. The first time you try anything, even though you see me eat this plant, and, and this you can cut up and use for lettuce, you can make tea, or you can make a salad out of it, just whatever. Uh, this is a real good plant and it's mild, but is there the, the chance that your body don't like it and you're allergic to it, 
try a little of something before you do anything. That's with any plant, any mushroom, whatever. Simple things. But now, what I read off of on here is the narrow leaf plantain. And the reason I did is when you go over here and you read uh, the uses for the Plantago Major is same as for Plantago Lanceolata. So the, the uses are the same, and that's why, uh, so if you find the narrow leaf, depending on where you're at, it's not as common here where I live. Uh, however, it is here, I just don't have it right here in my front door. Uh, but now, when you read in this book, now this is one of the things I wanted to, uh, and I know I marked plantain right here. Common plantain, Englishman's foot, whey bread, great for greater plantain, devil shoestring, bird seed, snake weed, rib or ripple grass, and many other names. So this plant, it's it, the Native Americans named it white man's foot because it showed up. We brought it over here from Europe. Here's a plant of European origin, which is widespread and which gardeners with lawns know well as a weed. One name, white man's foot, is said to have been applied to the Indians for it seemed to have sprung up everywhere the Europeans went. The Latin name plantago itself means sole of the foot because of the leaf, the shape of the leaf. There is in fact much of interest of the various local names of plantain indicating associations with ceremonies, with magic, and with healing. How far back this goes is hard to say, but Shakespeare we find Romeo. Your plantain leaf is excellent for that benevolo. For what, I pray? Benvolio. For your broken skin. So do you find this in one of the plays of Romeo that Shakespeare wrote? It's what this is referring to. Thus, one sees illustrated in a complete agreement of all writers that plantain leaf is vulnerary, a wound plant. And that, in everyday use, it is excellent for the relief from stings and bruises, from... Alleviant for nettle stings, a most careful investigator of southwestern Indian medical practice, Edith Murphy says that the Shoshone Indians make poultices of the whole plant and apply for battle bruises. In some cases, she says the poultices are combined with the foliage of white clematis. To the same effect, another authority on Indian usages, Dr. Sidney Riggs, tells the author that the Indians of southern Massachusetts learned to apply plantain leaves both for wounds and to draw out the poison of snake bites. This is the short usage one finds noted everywhere. The whole plant is used and the leaves are soaked a bit and being washed and bound to the sore spot. For internal use in diarrhea, an infusion is made with an ounce of the plant to a pint of boiling water, taken in a wine glass dose. Writers from both our southern and from Mexico su suggest that the ointment made from the leaves is good for sore eyes. So one of the things I wanted to read from both of these is, this is one of the few plants that's safe to use around your eyes. Most plants, they say, don't put stuff. You've got to be careful what you put around your eyes. There's two accounts of this saying that it's safe to use around your eyes. If you get irritation in your eyes, if you get... One of them I read where they made an infusion of water and plantain crushed up and took the juice and literally dropped it into the eye. Uh, now, when it says snake bites, to use plantain on a snake bite, would have to be an emergency situation to where I was not going to be able to get to a doctor. Personally, if you get bit by a rattlesnake, a copperhead, or a cottonmouth, and probably several other species, but that's what's common in the area that I live that is definitely dangerous, you need to go get an antivenom from the doctor, okay? Enough said. If you're somewhere that you just, it's impossible to get to a doctor, then by all means, plantain might work. I'm not saying it will. I read you that out of a book dated back in the 60s. So you take that for what it's worth. Uh, however, this is the two books that I'm that we're going by today. And I'll try to get a better look in the sunlight. The rain's coming down and it's sun shining while it's raining. So I'm, I'm going to try to uh, go look for and pick some wild lettuce. Okay. 
right here in this, I'm going to show you this plant. I'm not going to harvest this plant. Uh, but I want to point out that this plant is over 10 foot tall. I promise. Uh, I'm going to walk over here. Now, I'm going to try to point up here in the camera. The tip of that plant is right up there. That is the top of it. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to stand beside it. This is me head high. And that plant is probably closer to 12 foot. Uh, however, you see some of these leaves have done turned brown. Uh, I don't know, personally, if in this shape, this plant is still any good for anything. Uh, I'm not going to harvest them. There is still a little bit of milk coming out of that where I pulled them off. Uh, like right here where I pulled this brown, brown leaf off, there's just a spot of that lactocarium coming out of that. But these leaves are lobed. Uh, and there is some very fine spines on this plant. I wish that camera would focus, but I don't think it will. But anyway, on here they are some very fine but uh, this, this one leaf is a little far gone for me to harvest, to extract anything out of. You want to dry them on your own. And like this leaf here, I'm going to just pull one off of here. You see, this don't have a lot of prickles on it. And you see the shape? It's not scallop lobe like the other one is. So uh, we're going to have to do a little looking and researching. There's several different varieties of it. I think there's three at least that grow right here on this property. Uh, and the yellow lactocarium, as far as I know in my research, it is the same as the rest of it. it you, the uses, as far as that goes, is the same. Uh, it's technically different because it's a different color. It has a different scientific name. But as far as you harvesting it and using it, as far as I know, everything is the same on that. Uh, I'll look that up before the end of this video, before we conclude it, and we'll we'll get some definite sights on that. Uh, but the shape of this leaf, you see there's several different shapes. This one is serrated is what I call it. And uh, that's a pretty long leaf, but now that is a very large plant. But we're going to go harvest some different plants, that, and I have an abundance of this on this property. So there's no, no hope of me wasting it or like me throwing that leaf down i don't need that uh th there's plenty of it i'm gonna leave that plant there and let it seed out because this is right here in the yard and there's in fact there's another one here there's one there and there's several of them right here going down this i've got muscadimes that's poke weed growing right there and it's starting to go to berries do not eat poke berries but uh we're gonna go look and find some to harvest Right here is one more instance that these, uh, let me just count them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven 10, 11, 11 plants right there that I can just see. And then as I scan around, I see right back there, that would be 12, uh, I see 13, and this is in one little spot. Now this is still right here in my yard. This I mower and I clean up my yard. But there's a pile of these plants right here and this is on the back side of some stuff that I, uh, where I had a, a pen back here. So probably what I'm gonna do, and my belt's coming loose. The reason I keep showing you on the yard there was one real popular YouTube guy that I watch, that I like, has good videos, uh, but he bragged about he'd just rather let his yard grow up and had an edible yard. I'm going to be honest with you. You can leave a few spots like this and have more edibles than you can eat. 
there's no excuse for being lazy and not wanting to mow your grass. Now, that's just all there is to that. I cannot stand for my yard, and I mow about probably three and a half to four acres once a week. But now, these are some smaller plants. Now, I'm going to cut these. In the past, I have... Uh, in the past, I have pulled the roots and all up. But like I said, these are not going to seed yet. I'm going to leave some to go to seed. And this like to carry them coming out of here. If you can see that. Now that is a good pain. Pain medicine. My other video, I'll show you how to render it down. However, since then... The way I did that was a little risky. You seen in that video, I've got it a little too warm. What I'm gonna say do is get you an old crock pot and put this stuff in a crock pot and let the crock pot cook it down. There's no chance of you getting it too hot. It takes longer, but you come out with a better product. If you do get it too hot, it will weaken that tremendously. Just a little bit of getting it too hot. And if you boil it very long, you can completely kill it. So another thing with this, this lactocarium is not just a pain reliever. You see these itch bites? That milky substance coming out of there. You can rub that milky substance. And what I'm doing right here, you see how I'm just cutting this? You see how I, I took my knife and I'm just cutting some marks in there. Once that goes to bleeding like that, the plant bleeding I mean, you can rub that on these itch marks. And I don't know what these are from. At first I thought it was ant bites, but they keep itching and ants don't usually get me that bad, but now however I'm getting older. But I'm going to harvest a couple of these to take with us, so I don't want a lot right now. So I'm just going to get about two, or three maybe. Let's get three. We're going to tie these in a bundle. Now these, uh, I don't want any of these brown leaves. I'm going to pick all that off. Now if you're going to smoke that, and smoking it does work. However, I, I don't smoke. Smoking's, I mean, bad health for you anyway. And I smoked for several years, so I knew for a fact what it'll do for you. Okay, the video quality in here, I promise you, is not going to be real good. Uh, I have done film some video in here on the smokehouse video when I was checking on my smoked meat. And it did not turn out real good, so bear with me. I did want to show you what I was doing in here, though. What I'm going to do right here is wrap this around a time or two. And I've got way longer string than I need. What I was going to do was throw that over. We're going to hang this right there just like that. If you can see right up here. I have laid a piece of screen wire across some slats in here. This is half inch mesh. Uh, it's some leftover scraps from a chicken pen. So what I'm gonna do with my basket of stuff is I'm just gonna spread it out on it, okay? A dehydrator would probably be preferable. But all of this is oak in here. And I, the other day when I was filming another video, I don't know why in the world I was in here and said my pine box, but that box over there, that that salt box is all oak. There ain't nothing pine in here but the floor that's treated. But I'm just going to spread these leaves out where they're not overlapping. I've got plenty of room to spread them way out, so I'm going to. Uh, and, and I'm going to let you get a look at what, I, what I've got. And I don't have a lot of room in here. You know, this ain't but six by six, so... There's no such thing as getting in here and farting and not smell it. I bought a new battery for this old girl. Y'all haven't seen this. We're going to travel on it today being that it's... I'm 
plug that that's a trickle charger. I just had put it on there to make sure that battery was hot. I bought this four wheeler in 04 and uh, 2004. This has been a machine. It's a 500 Rubicon Honda. It has been some places. It has done some things. That Polaris Ranger won't hold a candle to this as far as durability. I love my Ranger, but it won't go where this will go, and it won't hold up to what this will hold up to. Uh, show you right here I left some plants that right there is beauty berry there's poke weed right here and then there's several varieties of stuff that I've let go but wild okay on this wild lettuce oh. this you see how large this plant is some of these get extremely large I showed you the one up here this is a different property. These are growing right up against this hay bale. There's one over here actually growing out of the hay bale on the bottom. Um, and there's several different varieties of this. Somebody commented on one of my other videos that the way to tell for sure is to look and see if it's got spines under there. That's not entirely true. However, in a way it is, most of them have a spine. These leaves right here do not have a prickly spine under them at all. And they're lobed, lance shaped. So what I want to show you is I'm going to look, show you this wild lettuce. Okay, right there is the wild lettuce. If you want to pause that where possibly you can read it. I know I can't hold it still. Where you can see the picture and the description of that. Now this is in the Peterson's Guide. And this is the only book that I have that has wild lettuce in it. I'm going to read this to you. Smooth biennial. Leaves irregularly divided, coarsely toothed, flowers, bluish to creamy white, rarely yellow. I do have a variety here on the property that has a yellow leaf. However, they're not blooming yet. July to September. Where found damp thickets. Uh... NFLD to, I guess, Newfoundland to Virginia, mountains, Tennessee to Iowa, westward uses, and I'm down in Mississippi, and this is that plant, so this is growing in central Mississippi. Uh, American Indians use root tea for diarrhea, heart and lung ailments for bleeding, nausea, pains, milky stem juice for skin, Eruptions, leaves applied to stings, tea sedative, nerve tonic, and a diuretic. It has a lot of uses other than just a plant pain medicine. My last video, I discussed using this plant for pain medicine. It will do more than that. Like I showed you earlier, it's for skin irritations. It, it does several other things, as this says. I mean, diarrhea, there's, there's several ways to use it. Uh, I can't sit here and just explain, especially with three or four plants, without making an hour-long video on the exact way to use each and every plant. There's a lot of videos out there on wild lettuce, so go start searching those other videos. But I do want to show you that this is what this plant looks like. Uh, you can see this plant. And you can see on this large plant, this is by the side of my hand, there is no spines. I'm trying to get it to focus. I don't know that it is. And this one has something growing on it. You see that? There's some kind of little eggs right there. So when you're picking a plant to use it, you see this cocoon growing? Cocoon growing. I don't know what's in that, but I'm not going to disturb it. I'm going to lay it back over there and let whatever that is do its do. But there's plants, but I just wanted to show you that there is no spines, spikes, up and down this stem. And that is a large, and you can see right here, 
the lactocarium coming out of that. Now you can, this lactocarium right here, very bitter. And I'm going to see if you can tell right here on my thumbs a good bit. But it almost has a slight yellow tint right in there. I don't know if you can see it, but you can take it just like that. Very bitter, but it does work. There's a pain. It also is like a anti-anxiety, I would say. Uh, in some of the books and, and on the online stuff that I have looked at, it talks about using it for anxiety. I don't know exactly the extent, doses, I'm not a doctor, you got to make your own judgment on that. But I did want to show you that some of these varieties, let me read a couple of the different varieties that are here. And like I said, my books is getting damp, it's steadily spranking rain, I'm trying to, I'll probably look rushed in this video. There's wild lettuce, that's Lactuca canadensis. I'm assuming that comes from a Canadian variety, maybe. Lactuca cereola. Um, and I don't think next thing we go to is different, different plants and dandelions there in that section. But it skips over here and goes to wild lettuce, which is Lactuca banis. Oh. Uh, so each one of these, which is the one I think this is, um, the two, the first two, the Cereola and the Canadensis is not what I have here, I don't think. Now, they may be one of the varieties on the property um, because like I said, I've got several different varieties and you can see there's a smaller one coming up back here. Uh, one over there. These, and you see some of the leaves are, are solid oval. I showed you the other one over there that's oval shaped. These are serrated. It's all the same plant. When I made my first wild lettuce video, I wasn't sure about all this. I've done enough research now. I know what they are. Uh, but anyway, we're going to go now and we're going to go take a look at the mint plant. <laughs> Y'all hear them valves rattling? They need to be adjusted. I'm gonna have to get that took care of. kind of plants coming up in here that we're just letting letting grow wild. You can see on here okay these leaves see how they're shaped they're alternating now I have knocked some of these off let me pull up one right here that I have not knocked all the leaves off okay you see how these are alternating one's turned that way one's turned this way or one set let me say it that way and then it comes up to a flowering head each one of these is approximately I'm going to hold it up here. It's about three foot tall. And you can see this stuff just grows in patches. And it's starting to flower out. It's everywhere. And I do not know exactly what all plants you guys is in here. But the mint is all this whitish tipped stuff right here. Mint. Uh, you seen in the video where I was picking mushrooms and we made some mint tea. That was purely just for 
enjoyment of drinking. This has a mint flavor. Uh, now I call this uh, silver tip mint. That is not a name for it. That is just what I call it because you see how right now it almost has a silver look to the top of this. This plant, and this is my buck knife. This is a, a really sharp knife. It's good for just cutting stuff. However, it's real finely ground. You don't want to do no woodwork with it. Uh, I like to bend the tip on it one day, trying to clean out a hole that I had drilled. But this this mint has a square stem, and uh, once it gets fully grown down here, it's hard to define that it's square till you really feel of it. You don't just look at it and say, oh, that's square. Some of them you can. This has a slightly serrated leaf, uh, and this is mid-July. It's about July the I don't know, 8th, 9th, 10th, I don't even know exactly. And it's starting to flower. Uh, and this will have a light purple or a white flower to it. Um, but I'm going to tell you about this plant. It has a lot of good properties. It's good for colds, a lot of different things. But I just turned 40. And I'm starting to get some of those ailments that you just get that I had never experienced in my life. The other night, my chest got really tight, and I didn't know what was going on. I thought, Lord, am I having a heart attack? But I, it's not really my heart. My shoulder's not numb. My arm's not numb. But, you know, you start reading and Googling and looking for everything, and you don't really, everybody don't get numbness in there. So we kept trying to figure out what was going on. I had eaten some spicy food. You know I like hot peppers. Uh, I, we had had tacos, and uh, I had some hot peppers on them. I had hot sauce on them. And then my little boy, we sat down and had a big bowl of ice cream. Well, the, about an hour and a half, two hours later, I started experiencing this tightness. And I was to the point that I was gasping for breath. And it eased up after about 30 minutes, and I said, well, I'm going to be okay. And then it come back. I went and laid down in the bed, and it come back about... I don't know, 11 o'clock, and it stayed with me. At 1 o'clock, I was up walking the floor with my hands on my hips because that was the only way that would relieve this. And, you know, we was trying to decide that we need to go to the doctor, and I do not like to go to doctors. That is my personal thing. I'm not telling you you shouldn't go to a doctor, but I do not like to go to doctors. I do not like pharmaceutical medicines. Uh, I don't even like to take Advil and, and Tylenol and that sort of thing. Um... So anyway, we're researching, I figure out that after I burped a time or two and I passed gas a time or two and I felt some air move and it relieved a little bit and then it tightened back up, that I had trapped gas in my chest and in my, I guess in your bronchial tubes, I don't know right where it's trapped, but it's trapped gas. One of the things that relieves this is certain tea. I went to this. I happened to have some of this tea, or these. I, I had cut a couple of these. In fact, I had just pulled some up. But I had a handful of this laying on the table. I stripped the leaves off, the flowering parts, everything. I put it in a bowl. I made some tea. And within 15 minutes, all of that eased and went away. So, what I'm going to tell you is... This is not going to stay. If you feel like you're having a heart attack, you need to make sure you're not having a heart attack. This is not going to help that. But in the case that it is trapped gas in your chest and heartburn, that type of gas trapped in there, tea out of this mint will alleviate that. I know for a fact because I have experienced that. Now, I have drank this for colds. I have drank it for several other things. But now I'm going to get my book. And there's several varieties of this. Um, I'm going to, like I said in a minute, I'm going to read a little bit about this, but about this plant. And I've got bookmarks all in my, my book here. There's wild mint, white horse mint, uh, hoary mountain mint. There, I know there's, in the other book, there's a Canadian mint. Um, and I don't know exactly which all ones. This is really, I think, hoary mountain mint. According to the pictures that I find in this book, and I'll show you what I'm going to read. So that's what I'm going to read about right here. That's the, the closest thing that I see. Perennial, two to six foot, leaves oval to lance shape, stalked, toothed, hoary beneath, 
upper one's white haired on both sides and that's this top why I call it silver it looks like little fine white hairs and it feels velvety when you touch these top leaves and you can rub that off uh, white haired on both sides flowers pale lilac July to September calyx lobes apparently two lobed lance shaped where found in dry thickets New Hampshire to Florida north to Tennessee uses leaf tea once used for fevers colds coughs colic stomach cramps said to induce sweating relieve gas American Indians poultice leaves for headaches washed inflamed penis with tea uh, so there's there's several other remedies uh, and, and a lot of these remedies in these species is the uses are the same throughout the mint family. I'm trying to make sure that when I'm cutting this that I don't get any some of this. I'll cut this one and show you. You see that's got a vine wrapped all around it. Make sure you don't pick that. Because you don't want any excess stuff with your mixed in with what you're possibly going to make a medicine out of. Make sure that it's clean. But now this is plenty for what we're going to do. I've got a, I've got a good handful of this. So let's take it. We're going to take it to our uh, smokehouse and we're fixing to fire up the old Honda. See if we can make it back to the house. Y'all that Polaris. I have a lot of trouble. I see some guys promoting Polaris. Uh, I love my Polaris as far as it being a side-by-side -side and it'll run about 60 miles an hour, which I seldomly get it over about 45. Uh, but I don't like the Kubota because it'll only go about 20-something, or the, the ones that we have. My dad's got one. Uh, so I don't really like that. It's really heavy. If I was going to buy one, it'd be the Honda Pioneer. Uh, my Polaris, the front end will not stay under it. I cannot keep universal joints in the front end of it. So for us guys, and I know a lot of you that are into this kind of stuff is walking, doing stuff. But on this property, I'm right here around my house doing things. I'm going to use the tools that I have. Uh, so you guys that are like me, that are getting out, rambling around, riding, man, a four-wheeler is awesome. Uh, I've had that four-wheeler for a lot of years. The buggy is more useful in, in being able to ride somebody beside you. I really don't like somebody's legs wrapped all around me when I'm riding. But as far as getting in and out of places, it'll go a lot of places, or I feel more comfortable going a lot of places on that four-wheeler than I do. And we don't call them a quad. We call them a four-wheeler. Uh, the the side-by-side, -side, I call that a buggy, so just to clear all that. But anyway, we're going to get on that. That Honda has been a good one. That's, if for durability, Honda's the way to go, in my opinion. But uh, we're going to go back. We're going to hang these up. And uh, what we'll do is I'm just going to dry them for today. But most of these, we're going to make teas. I'm going to probably attempt to make some type of an oil out of the plantain for a salve like with olive oil, maybe. And... Uh, but these will be dried and bagged for like teas and things. The wild lettuce will be the same way. Once it's dried in that smokehouse, I'll simply just bag it up. So uh, we're going to conclude this video right now. And uh, thank you guys for watching my films, my videos, uh, supporting us. Uh, I know a lot of y'all watching it just to hear me talk. So this is old country boy from out in the woods. But... The old country boy is studying and doing some things. Uh, we research everything. If I tell you about something, trust me that I have studied it. I'm not going to steer you wrong, especially not on purpose. Uh, I'm not making videos just for the sake of making videos. There is a lot of other videos out there on all these plants and stuff. Uh, Mike Reed, check him out. He's got a lot of good material. Dave Canterbury, I know all of you know him uh, and probably already watch a lot of his videos. He's got a... Uh, series on plants go check that out but here's the reason I, I, I mentioned those guys you don't need to watch one video on a plan and then run with that information because the best way I have found to utilize YouTube is to watch plant videos or whatever you're interested in on several different people and you can put together all the things that are common 
And you know, well, that's pretty, everybody agrees on this. That's solid. Well, there's one guy like me today, when I mentioned, you know, that book said something about snake bites. I don't know that I would be betting on plantain for a snake bite. So, you know, there's probably not a lot of other videos on there that mention that. I read that out of the book. That's one of the odd deals on it. But, you know, if you're in a situation where that's the only option you have, it's good to know that information. I wouldn't recommend somebody using plantain for a snake bite. I mean, that's just common sense, in my opinion, which is not so common these days. The mint, I'm, I'm going to use a lot of this just for an herbal tea, just because I like to make teas and drink them. I drink a lot of coffee, so drinking teas that I make out of these plants substitutes that, keeps me from drinking a lot of coffee. The next video that we do will be later on in the fall on these plants will be goldenrod. Uh, goldenrod is one of my favorite teas, but I like to wait till over in the fall and pick the flowers and all to go with it. And there's some of it growing right out here now. Uh, it's a little more difficult to identify. But thank y'all for watching my videos. We'll see y'all next time on Spirit of the Outdoors.